Hey guys, how's it going? Stoutman coming back at you, and today I'm going to show you some things that I picked up recently. Some of them were really good deals, and some of them were just okay deals, and, you know, some of them I just had to have in my collection. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to show you the two used DVDs that I picked up at uh, Everyday Music. It is a record store here in Portland that... Uh, they have a couple uh, places here, you know, a couple retail stores here. It's not quite as popular as something like Powell's, but it's really, like, if you ever come to Portland, you definitely need to check them out because they've got a lot of weird eclectic things there. And they have a policy about, like, selling or buying used items where you can literally, like, take in used items, like, say, I wanted to take in... Josh and Sam. I never would because they wouldn't know the value of it and they wouldn't actually give me the right proper value for it probably. But you can take things into everyday music and sell them for a fairly decent price and unlike other stores you don't get store credit. You legitimately get cash. They give you cash for whatever you're selling to them which is really cool. And what it means, though, is that a lot of people come in. It's kind of like a pawn shop, except for it's a record store. And it's a record store that has Blu-rays, DVDs, uh, cassette tapes, VHS tapes, uh, CDs, records. It's got pretty much everything media-related. Their focus, of course, is on music, but they've got an interesting selection of movie stuff. So if you ever come to Portland... Right down the street from Powell's Books is an everyday music, and you owe it to yourself to check out the everyday music store. It's just literally two blocks away. Go there. So anyways, uh, just to give you an idea of what the kind of the kind of stuff that you might find there, while I was there, one of the things I didn't pick up that I kind of waffled on and I probably should have picked up was John Favreau's Made on DVD, which... I had never even heard of before. Apparently it was one of his first movies. So, yeah. Cool. And then there were some, like, Japanese movies there that were, like, clearly region-locked movies. <laughs> but, uh, they... I had never seen or heard them heard of them before. I didn't know really what they were because it was all in Japanese language that I couldn't read. So, it was, like, in kanji. So... Um, all I knew was, like, this is a Japanese movie. That's all I could recognize is, like, well, this is, this is Japanese, right? But, yeah, it was just really interesting to see that. And they had a few, of other, a few other things there that were also, like, from another country kind of thing, right? And you'll find that kind of stuff. You'll find some weird, crazy stuff there sometimes. And that's why it's worth it to check it, check it out. Uh, what I found that I ended up picking up were... The, the two things that I found that I'm not picking up were as good as it gets here for two fifty. Uh, yeah, it's not a great price two fifty. You know, you can go to like a swap meet or whatever and find maybe find this for a buck or something. But it's not actually that easy to find this in the wild, at least not around here. So when I saw it for two fifty, I knew well. You know, it's available on Blu-ray from Twilight Time. Twilight Time release is like 3,000 print run, and it's now out of print. So, unless you want to pay the collector's price of like 50 to $75 for that Blu-ray, this is what you get. Also, the Twilight Time release does not have the same special features as this DVD, so you're still probably going to want the DVD because it has... Wait, does it even have any special features, or did I just talk right out of my ass? There's a commentary. Well, there's a commentary. Okay. Maybe it does have the commentary on the fucking Blu-ray. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is that it was this or the fucking Blu-ray, right? And the Blu-ray is way too fucking expensive for me right now. So to get this for 250 good deal. <laughs> Especially considering how much I love that movie. Oh my god, As Good As It Gets is really one of the best movies ever. If you if you want a movie that like really reflects accurately what it's like to have an anxiety disorder, or for that matter what it's like to have any kind of mental disorder, 
that movie better does it better than any other I've ever seen. Speaking as somebody who has one of those disorders, it it accurately reflects what it's actually like. So, anyways, next up we have, and this is the last thing I picked up there, Far from Heaven, Farfik Nugin. No, uh, Far from Heaven here. This is a Todd Haynes movie that is uh, referencing directly uh, the Douglas Sirk film All That Heaven Allows. Like, even the title, Far From Heaven, kind of references that. Um, and I don't know if a lot of people who watched this originally when it first came out in the mid-2000s really understood that, but yes, it is actually referencing All That Heaven Allows, a Douglas Sirk movie, a fantastic Sirk movie that now you can get on uh, Criterion Collection. Absolutely gorgeous. Go, I, I, I need to get that myself, right? But when I saw this for two fifty, I was like, I need to get this too because this is like a direct, directly influenced by that movie in almost every possible way. It's practically a fucking remake in a lot of ways. Yeah, there are differences here and there, but it's very much like a reimagining of that story, basically. So, yeah, if you have seen and do love Douglas Sirk's All That Heaven Allows. You owe, your, owe it to yourself to check out Far From Heaven because I don't know if I'd say it's just as good, but it's pretty good. And I found this there for two fifty, and they actually had a few other copies of this there that were in pretty good shape. So, yeah, two fifty, pretty good. Next up, I'm gonna save the best for last here. You better fucking believe it. Uh, from Amazon, I picked up Bronson. Nicholas Winding reference Bronson for $7.99. Very good deal. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the best deal ever, but it's a pretty damn good deal. And I definitely needed to have this in my collection. I've got Only God Forgives. I've got Drive. What's my excuse for not having Bronson? There is none. Bronson is a fantastic movie. And yet again, more proof that Nicholas Winding Refn does the shockingly, shocking brutality in movies better than anyone else. He just, he knows, he has an eye for shocking brutality in the same way that, like, Alfred Hitchcock had an eye for, uh, the, for thrillers, you know what I mean? Or for suspense, right? The same way that Alfred Hitchcock knew how to build suspense, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn knows how to build suspense and to really to make a powerfully evocative uh, and brutal scene stick out and really get to you, you know? Because he not only makes it look as real as he possibly can, but because of the timing, because of the pacing that he has for his movies, he, like, sets these events far enough apart from each other that when it finally does happen like just it's building up to it building up to it building up to it and when it finally does happen when that moment of brutality happens you are just like oh god I know what's happening I know what's going to happen I don't want to watch it I don't want to see it I don't want to see it that that's what happens to me every time I watch one of his movies I love that I love that he has that ability that he has that power he's such a good filmmaker when it comes to that kind of stuff absolutely love it. So, of course, I had to have Bronson for $7.99. Next up, this is... I guess I should uh, save this, because this is going to be a part of uh, another package that I'm picking up. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this for later. You know, get on my case, but <laughs> what I'm about to show you, make up for it anyways. <laughs> so... I recently watched this movie with my friend. It's available to watch right now on Netflix. And it's probably one of the best ways to watch it right now because the only other way to get it is on Blu-ray and the Blu-ray is 30 bucks because it's an independent film being independently produced on Blu-ray. So, of course, it's going to cost quite a pretty penny. And that's this is for this version. There's also a steelbook out there but, um, yeah, it's going to be more costly to get that steelbook. So, particularly if you live in the States. So, yeah, um, 
this is probably the version that most people are going to get and it's the version that you should pick up if you haven't seen this check it out on Netflix and the second you do see it on Netflix I have no doubt that you're just going to be like yeah I need to own that on fucking Blu-ray right fucking now which is exactly why I did just that Turbo Kid oh my god this movie is fucking amazing the soundtrack is brilliant the fucking story is brilliant the the Filmmaking is a little, you know, cheesy, but that's exactly what you want it to be for this kind of a story. It's such a good movie. I love this movie. This is an instant cult classic. It's an instant fucking classic movie that everyone has to have. So, yes. Again, I reiterate, if you have Netflix, watch this movie on Netflix now. And once you have watched it, you will no doubt come to the same conclusion that I came to. Run on over to Amazon and pick it up for $30 while it's still available. Because as we know, with things like this that are independently produced, there's every chance that there won't be that high of a print run and that they might not be selling it forever. So, if you're expecting the price to drop on this, I wouldn't expect that to happen anytime soon, number one. Number two, if you wait too long, you might miss out. So, just throwing that out there so that you know, so that you are aware. Also, if you love the soundtrack as much as I do, consider purchasing it from GarageBand or another... Or, I, don't if, I don't know if it's called GarageBand, but yeah. Or another source online, I believe. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name who did the music. Hold on. I, Lamatos. Lamatos. Yes. Lamatos did the soundtrack, and it's goddamn beautiful. It's an amazing fucking soundtrack. Probably, like, you know, I was talking about how Thief has an amazing soundtrack. Turbo Kid has probably, like, an equally amazing soundtrack. And so if you watch the movie and you like the soundtrack as much as I did, then yes, go and find Lamatos's, uh, uh, his version of this soundtrack on GarageBand or whatever it is, and, um, there's, like, a YouTube version of this that has, like, the first five or six songs from the soundtrack, but it's, doesn't have everything. There's, like, 50 fucking tracks on the official fucking album from Lamatos. So if you want everything, if you want that soundtrack to go along with this, which kind of I do want it to, uh, go there, support them, download it, pay for it, do whatever you have to do. It's worth it. It's fucking worth it. And it's beautiful. So yeah. Turbo Kid, excellent pickup, I have to say. It's probably one of my favorite pickups of this entire week. So, yeah. Very, very happy about that. I will show you the other thing that I picked up that I was neglecting to show you uh, when I get the rest of the stuff from that particular seller in. I've got a lot of extra stuff coming in in the next few weeks, which I know might sound surprising because recently I was complaining that I don't have any money, I'm broke, oh no, 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 because the government man took my money and they won't give it back yet. Guess what happened? Government man gave me my money back. <laughs> the taxes that were accidentally charged twice were sent back to me via check. I put that into my account and I have money again. So the second I realized I had that money back and I had money again that I could spend, I was like, you know what? There are a few things that I want to pick up now so that I don't have to worry about missing out on them in the future. Things that, like, there have been rumors that it's going to go out of print or something like that, you know. I wasn't going to chance it. I wasn't going to take that chance. I just said, fuck it, I'm getting these things. So, yeah. It wasn't a whole lot, but it was some... It, there were a few things there that, you know, I just wanted to have in my collection desperately enough that I knew that I should buy it now, you know what I mean? So that I don't have to worry about whether or not I'll 
have the opportunity to buy it later because it goes out of print and then the price is skyrocketing. you know what I mean? So, yeah. So that's my thinking on that. That's actually one of the big reasons that I picked up Turbo Kid here. That's one of the big things that I purchased, but I've got a lot more things coming in. So, yeah. Uh, that should be fun to talk about, as will be the whole uh, process of digitizing these movies that are only on VHS so that everybody can enjoy them. Uh, I will be going out and looking for more of these copies of movies on VHS as I get the opportunity to do so. Um, the, the nice thing about hunting for VHS is that the market isn't currently getting too flooded with people who know the real value of these things. So you can still go to a place like, say, Everyday Music, and they have VHS tapes from like 25 cents, and uh, Goodwill still has them for a buck. And, you know, if on the off chance they just randomly put something out on the shelf that actually is rare, only available on VHS, and worth like 50 bucks, they wouldn't know it. They more than likely would not check for something like that. Most Goodwill stores are going to think, well, that's... Pfft, that's nothing. So, yeah. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Other than that, I gotta go because it's telling me I'm out of battery. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Peace. <laughs>